So uh, I, was, I was going to talk about the magical wands in Noita, the kind of uh, wand crafting, spell crafting system we built. Uh, I guess, uh, I'm not sure if Petri and Olli uh, mentioned anything about who they are, what, what, what is it that they do. Uh, but I'm kind of the non-programmer part of the team. My deal when making the game has been mainly to first uh, to do pixel art. That is what I officially signed for uh, about seven years ago. And after that, it's been kind of growing to design and handling XML files, for example, all the enemies and uh, a lot of the kind of spell related things are XML files. And then also Lua scripting, which is also used heavily in the magical spells. And uh, unfortunately, because I, as mentioned, I was late because I misunderstood the London Metro system. Uh, I'm not sure how much Petri and Oli have been uh, mentioning, uh, talking about the those spells or the wands, but just as a kind of a very quick quick note is the game has these magical wands with different statistics. They have different rates of fire, different recharging times, different mana usages and mana recharge rates and so on. And then it has on top of those magical spells which you can put into these magical wands and these spells kind of dictate what the wands do when you use them. And uh, if this sounds a little bit like, yeah, okay. If this sounds a little bit like uh, guns with bullets to you, if there's some kind of a similarity, uh, you are in luck because uh, originally I think Petri suggested the, this idea of uh, in I think maybe 2014, where hey, we have a game we, which obviously has guns. We had guns like handguns and desert eagles and whatever, and Petri suggested uh, what if these guns actually work like decks of cards, and you draw cards from the deck, and those cards dictate uh, what happens when you shoot a gun. Uh, eventually, these guns changed into magical ones because the kind of themes of the game uh, got boiled down, and we get a better idea of what we wanted to do with the game theme-wise. Uh, but this idea of decks of cards uh, that dictate what happens was something that sounded pretty cool, and we decided to prototype it. I'm pretty sure it might have been summer 2014. Uh, it, it kind of immediately offered some ideas for what, of, what kind of cards we could do. We could have, obviously, bullets, like actual spells that deal damage. We could also have modifiers that kind of change what happens, what the qualities of those bullets are. Uh, we could have like there, there were a lot of different ideas that we built on. Originally, there were also like spells that were not beneficial, some kind of backfire system where maybe you would have to put some kind of bad spells into the magical ones or the guns or whatever, and uh, you would have to deal with the negative effects to get some kind of a positive. There are a lot, a lot of ideas you could build, build out of that. So we made a prototype, and the prototype felt pretty fun. Originally, it was kind of maybe detached from this physics-based thing that was very crucial for the game, uh, but since it was kind of fun, just fun to use, it felt interesting, we decided to keep it, uh, or at least we decided not to remove it, and uh, over time as the game took form and we kind of settled down on the, on the systems even up slowly over time, we got to the point where we could also implement this kind of, for example, magical spells that deal with the physics of the game. For example, one of the first spells you get when you start the game, you have this bomb, which is actually a physical object that directly destroys the game world, which is, yeah, or and uh, lights things on fire. So that is a very concrete example of this spell system, um, kind of showcasing the also the physics, which we wanted. And uh, so yeah, this one crafting system, I just listed a couple of things that I, at least I personally found neat about it, that, and I think we might have discussed it as a team that we, uh, most of us found these things neat, or even all of us. Uh, first of all, it's a very complex and deep system, because you have this, you can put these spells in the, into the ones, you have spells that affect other spells. Uh, we also devised this system of some ones having shuffle, where the kind of cards or spells it draws is randomized in order, 
so you cannot cannot kind of make intentional combos but instead you can you have to rely on probability but also there would be ones that do not shuffle you can design the order in which the spells are cast from the wand uh, which allows for a lot of kind of combo potential and stuff so the wand system immediately seemed very fruitful for th for this kind of a kind of a deep learning curve but still very satisfying system where you can start with very simple this one casts a fireball that's it and then later on you can have this one casts a homing fireball and when it hits a wall it casts eight exploding deers in random directions and those deers are leaking acid that kind of stuff so it seems a uh, like a very cool cool system uh obviously once we moved away from guns to the magical ones uh it also added a lot to the kind of magical alchemical theme of the game which is obviously a good thing for us uh yeah i also already mentioned that later on there was the physics system integration and uh with these spells, you can also, even if you don't know what you're doing, when you're just learning, you can make a wand, put some spells in it, cast it, po possibly die because you didn't know that the spells would be very detrimental for yourself. But the, this kind of experimentation also benefited the physics part of the game because you could see that, okay, I have a spell called Nuke that I can kind of imagine what that might do. I will cast it. It exploded very hard because that is what those kinds of things often do in games, especially uh, Finnish games from the 90s. And then you die because of the explosion, and then okay, well that's that might be interesting. Uh, and uh, it showcased that you can see things falling down. The physics are doing their job, so that's a uh, part of the system's strengths. And. Uh, Oh yeah, and also it, it also allows a lot for us because we spend a lot of time wondering what kind of uh, items we could have, what kind of things the player has to find in the game world. What is the reason why the player is exploring the game world? I, this might not have been something that we kind of consciously spend a lot of time, time uh, considering, or we might have, I don't remember anymore. But in the end, these spells are something you can collect in the game world that are all related into the same singular system. So we didn't have to kind of we didn't have to implement armor, different kind of weapons, different kinds of like a, we could have this single category of items inside which we could have a lot of like tons of variety. I think there are like 250 spells in the game right now. So that was also a very nice thing because uh, it could be easy to bloat the game with too many different categories of items. And in the end, we actually had a very small amount of categories. And obviously, it's also fun for us as developers to see what the players get up to, because the players get up to a lot of stuff. Uh, then there were some problems with this one crafting system. Uh, obviously, the balance was a big thing. How do we prevent certain cards from being like way too good? How do we guarantee that the players actually experiment with the game? We tried cards or spells that have limited uses, that you have to use them only a several, couple of times. They are so powerful, and that you have to throw them away and use uh, new cards. Uh, we tried limiting where cards spawn, so when you get later into the game, you get better cards, so on. Uh, then there was also the problem of how to present the cards. Obviously, this idea of guns as decks of cards turned into magical ones was maybe not the most intuitive system, so we wanted to uh, figure out something that would make it more plausible in-world. We tried making the spells uh, or like pieces of bones, different runes, uh, magical gems, things like that. There was a lo lot of options to go for. Uh, same for the user interface, obviously, kind of related to that. And uh, also, just like many kinds of design things, just starting from if we have these items, I guess we have need an inventory. What kind of an inv inventory do we have? What kind of inventory space we have? This is just kind of game design things related to this system. It was because it was kind of this own separate things, thing from everything else. Uh, it had a lot of these design problems that we kind of had to solve separately or not solve separately that didn't really touch the rest of the game but were still very important. Uh, also, in the end, even right now, we still haven't fully figured out how the player should realize the depth of the system, how to teach the player how the one system works. There's a, in many of these, there's also like different viewpoints to take 
Uh, you could e either say that, okay, it's cool if the player has to learn it all just by trying, which, which can be cool but also frustrating, or we could have a tutorial which so shows the player that, hey, you do it this way, which could be helpful but more limiting or more kind of less mysterious, less interesting. So eh. over time we solved some of these problems. Uh, for example, we realized that if the player can refresh those spells with limited uses every now and then, then because you never lose those spells completely, you can use them eventually, but you just have to wait for that refresh, uh, the kind of uh, frustration of losing spells forever went away. So this limiting powerful spells by making them have limited uses kind of solved itself over time and it was a very long process of being solved. And so we kind of found some solutions. Sometimes we had to do compromises. We had to discuss things for a very long time between the three of us. All, of, all three of us had different opinions, different viewpoints. Uh, sometimes we won't found compromises. Some, sometimes we just left things the way they were at a certain point and then never looked at it again and went to early access with that design. And it worked pretty well. People have been pretty happy with the game. I'm, I, I can't really complain about that, that system either. And sometimes we also just kind of tried different systems. For example, for this limited use system, we tried uh, making everything uh, last forever, which had the problems I mentioned earlier. Then we tried making everything have limited uses so that, the, so that you have to kind of shuffle your spells very often, even for the like very basic damage dealing spells. And it had some other problems, some other strengths. So this kind of iterative design eventually led to the magical wand system we have now. And right now things are pr looking pretty good. We have a Many different kind of magical wands I actually spoke more about the spells instead of the wands, but the sp spells are more interesting to me than the wands because the wands are kind of the vehicle for the spells. And the sp magical wands on their own, they are just a clump of stats that affect speed or recharge them and so on. So the spells are kind of the main star of the show here. But right now we have a lot of spells. We have this kind of wand spawning system. There are still those some issues that we might want to look at, but since the game is in early access, that's obviously, uh, like we have the power of returning to those things that we left one way or, ano or another when we went to early access and changed them. Obviously some players are going to be disappointed because some people have, have really deep understanding of the system right now, but as game designers, I guess we have, we have to take the risk of someone being annoyed about our shenanigans, but yeah. I guess that's the nutshell of the one system of the game. Thank you.